today. Back into 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, I have told you, and I believe this with all of my heart, that this is probably the closest demonstration, definition, explanation that we have to the heart of God. There is Nothing other than the scriptures on the passion of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. There is nothing that quite takes us into the heart of God like 1 Corinthians 13 does. Now, it ends by saying the greatest things in the world are faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. And it's always amazed me how there are huge numbers of volumes of books about both faith and hope. But if you really start categorizing through the years, there's not a lot of volumes out there about love, which is the greatest thing in the world. And I'm telling you, I think that one of the reasons that we don't quite grasp 1 Corinthians 13 is because we see it often through filters. We all have filters, like, like sunglasses. If you've got on dark green sunglasses, when you look out, everything looks kind of green. If you've got on kind of a yellowish shade sunglasses, everything kind of looks yellow. So it kind of depends on what's up here, what filters you are looking through. And the filters we look through when it comes to talking about this great word love is primarily the filter of our culture, the pop music, the situation, the, the sitcoms on TV, the fairy tales that we have learned about love. Well, it's so much deeper than that. And as we have talked about in this series, the Greek word that's used here is not the normal word that's used for love. There are at least four Greek words for love. It's not like the English where we have one word for love. But each one of these words uh, in the Greek has a different shade, uh, a different dimension of what that word is actually meant to be. There's storge, which is family love. Uh, there, uh, there is eros, which is uh, romantic love. Uh, there's phylos, which is brotherly love, like Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. But the word that's used here is the word Agape, agape. And this word agape is the same word that is used in 1 John 4 where it says God is agape. God is agape. God is love. Now he's not saying that love is God. That's something totally different. What he is saying is God is love. God is love. So the more loving that you and I become, the more godly we become. We have been created in the image of God, which tells us that we have been created in the image of love. And the further away we get from love, agape love in our lives, the more fracturing, the more distressed, the more stress, the more pressure we have because we get further away from our original roots. The root of being created in the image of God. So let's look at this this morning. I, I, we've, we've hit this from a number of uh, directions on 1 Corinthians 13, and today what I want to do is talk to you about priorities, and I've just entitled this, The Quest for the Best, and let's start off by reading it, 1 Corinthians 11. I'm starting, uh, actually, that should be 1 Corinthians 12, my apologies, but I'm starting a, a chapter earlier in verse 27. All of you together are Christ's body, that's us. There's a lot there. We are the body of Christ. As we move about our community, Christ 
moves around our community. We are the body of Christ, and each of you is part of it. And there are some of the parts that God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers. Then there are those who, are do, who do miracles. There are those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. This is a passage about spiritual gifts. Being an apostle is a gift. Being a leader is a gift. All of these things are, are talking about the charismata. We get the word charismatic from it. The charisma of God. Those who can help others, spiritual gift. And you say, well, I, anybody can help others. Well, yeah, but there are those who can really, really, really help others. And it's a spiritual gift when we take that and we turn it into working for the church. And it doesn't mean in a necessarily a professional sense. It can mean in a confessional sense. Every one of us is a member of the body of Christ and a spiritual gift is given to us for the good of the church. And so a great violinist may be talented, but may not be gifted in the, in the scriptural terms, the theological terms that we're looking at here, unless that gift of playing the violin is used in some way to minister to the church, to encourage the church. Uh, this wonderful worship team that we've had this morning. If you've got a band, a rock band, a contemporary music band that is really talented, they can be out there playing to anybody and everybody. But when their music is used and turned toward edifying, encouraging, admonishing the church, then you've got the spiritual gift. There's a difference between talents and gifts. All gifts are talents, not all talents are gifts. Next verse, verse 29. Are we all apostles? No. Are we all prophets? Mm -mm. Are we all teachers? No. Do we all have the power to do miracles? No. Do we all have the gift of healing? No. Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? No. Now, there are some groups who believe that if you don't speak in tongues, that that's proof that you're not a Christian, that what proves your Christianity is that you speak in tongues. That is not taught in Scripture. Now, speaking in tongues is a gift today, but... Uh, there's a lot of counterfeit gifts going on around out there, too. But, but look what he says in verse 32. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now, and this is how he ends it, let me show you a way of life that's best of all. That, that's why I've called this the quest for the best. It is a... Uh, an incredible chapter that helps us to live life to the fullest, to live life with full meaning, to live a life of significance and a life of joy, okay? Now, this is uh, the uh, New Living Translation, so some of your translations might say this just a little bit differently, but if you take the context of the Scripture and the definition of the words and the translation of the words in the original language... This is what you've got. Let me show you a way of life that is best of all. That's how he ends chapter 12. He's talked about all of these gifts. He's saying every Christian has a gift, but not all gifts are the, for the same purpose, but all gifts are to encourage, admonish, teach the church. And so all of chapter 12 is a lesson in spiritual gifts. But he stops. The last verse in that chapter is, I want to show you a way of life that's best of all. And then begins chapter 13. And that's our chapter that we're having this series on. 